All right, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna be doing a wheelie tutorial, but like along with how to do the wheelie, I'm gonna show you like how to actually progress in a wheelie and start getting gradually higher and higher. So we also got my boy here, Jared. We have the same name, but we spell it different and I'll plug his Instagram because I don't think he has a YouTube. And then uh, he's gonna get some videos on me, but to start, I'm gonna just do like some first person stuff. So the first thing I'm gonna do, obviously, you you want to know how to ride a bike first but if you know how to ride a bike first your basic clutch up tutorial which a lot of people have already done you're gonna pull in the clutch you're gonna rev it and then you're gonna dump the clutch i'm gonna do a knee knocker now so i can show you a better view of how to actually clutch up The basics on how to clutch up, you pull in the clutch, you rev. Every bike's gonna be different. Not every bike will be the same. Jared's doing a little run around thing. Yeah, every bike's gonna be different. Nothing will be exactly the same except for the same bikes, but even that. I'm on stunted sprocket, so I have a 52 tooth sprocket. So mine will be a little bit different than a stock 636. <laughs> But everything is still basically the same it also applies i don't look at my rpms a lot of people are like what rpm do i rev to i don't check it i just rev until it pops up but i would recommend doing um trying to learn in second gear no matter what bike you're on first is too torquey and third may or may not even be able to do it um, the next step is going to be when you pop your wheelie and you drop your clutch you're going to be leaving your throttle exactly the same for me it's going to be a little bit different probably because i'm going to pop it up so high that i kind of have to let off the throttle so i don't just loop but i'll do like a smaller wheelie real quick so i can show y'all what it's going to be like in the beginnings of learning tutorials or i mean learning wheelies i mean you see that i popped it up i didn't even really get a good like initial height but if you just leave your throttle there, it pops up, it comes up. You just have to leave your throttle, you have to leave your wrist the same so you stay on the throttle and you slowly rise. That's what a lot of people struggle with right off the bat when they're trying to learn wheelies. They wanna pop it up and they immediately drop off the throttle and it comes right back down because they're scared. They're scared of the height. And I get it because I was there before I could probably, I mean, if you watched my old videos and there's ones even farther back than probably what I posted, I'd be doing that all day long because I'm getting on the throttle and dropping right off. But if you just stay on it, oh my gosh, if you just stay on it, you'll be all right it's gonna come up as long as your bike is powerful enough I don't I don't know about uh, very small bikes this may be uh, I could really small bikes but it's, it's harder those you actually probably will have to do in first gear there's a certain point where you can balance and there's a certain point where you have to foot brake in order to keep your bike down the balance point is gonna be different depending on each bike and uh, probably also the rider. I feel like the rider weight doesn't make that much of a difference, but it might. I don't really lean super far back in my bike. I kind of stay like, uh, just kind of comfortably in the center, whatever like doesn't feel like I'm stretching my arms too far. I tried to hold it at balance point. It's kind of hard to just hold it at balance point when I'm in a smaller lot. But balance point, I would say, is almost level with my head. And after that, the bike will be going above my head, um, which is kind of where you need the foot brake.
so hopefully I'll be able to show y'all with that where I'm actually going to be foot braking and why it's kind of important for me to mention the engine brake is my bike has a lot more engine brake so I probably use the foot brake way less than I than normal like normally people would but that's all right it's you know you'll have to just figure out for yourself anyway where you really need it you want to start learning how to use the foot brake before you ever get to that point so you're what you're like part of how you can progress in wheelies no matter if you're on stock or stunt or whatever because i can wheelie this bike too um but no matter like what you're doing you need to learn the foot brake before you ever actually need it or else you're gonna either scare yourself really bad or you're gonna loop and luckily i had a dirt bike to learn on which was easier than my stock um sprocket but uh now i'm on a stunt sprocket and it's more similar to my dirt bike but the balance points and everything like that's still different but the foot brake muscle memory is pretty much the same because as soon as you feel sketched out you just hit that foot brake and uh, how you can start learning to like get your wheelies higher while also being confident in the foot brake is like when you're popping up wheelies whether you need it or not just go ahead and foot brake it and bring it down and keep doing it over and over again and like get your body to understand that it's there and then um, as you're doing that like you're kind of building towards it but it's also like because when you have confidence it's easier to want to go higher it was way it was way harder for me to progress when i was doing highway wheelies with a stock sprocket because i didn't want to go up to 12 o'clock when i was going 90 miles an hour it was way easier to progress when i started going to lots um which might be hard on a stock bike but it's you know but anyway part of how i learned to progress which um this is a helpful tip from jigshabra is as you're going and you're in a wheelie if you'll just think to yourself like okay i'm now i'm gonna twitch the throttle i'm gonna go higher than i've ever been before but i'm immediately gonna foot brake so you know that you're gonna reach a new height that you've never experienced but you also know that you won't loop because you know you're gonna foot brake because you're telling yourself ahead of time hey i'm gonna foot brake so that's a, a big thing that started helping me um, not only reach balance point and kind of start getting higher than it, but to also dip back was just to know, hey, I'm gonna just twitch a throttle and then I'm gonna foot brake. And I'm not only, uh, and like you probably wanna kind of do harder foot brakes in the beginning. All my foot brakes in the beginning were like really hard and they really shot the bike down. Now I'm kind of starting to not really feather it, but kind of like drag it more instead of just smacking it. But like, the more you use it the more you'll see how it's going to react and once you see how it's going to react the more confidence you'll have and the better you'll be able to start using it but to really start progressing and getting higher and higher aside from just holding your throttle down and making sure you actually still keep rising up you need to you need to start foot braking you need to push yourself to a new height and then foot brake and like do it within your comfort zone don't just you know yeet yeet the bike the bike like way back and then foot brake like obviously you want to do it like within reason but just a little bit more and more every time and every time you you go you go home and you sleep on it you come back the next day and you'll surprise yourself with being able to being able to go higher and higher and then um just a couple other things i've struggled with like i've struggled with this bike leaning off to the right really bad and really nothing's fixed it it's just kind of i have to wheeling slower is the only thing that's really fixed it but if you stick your body off like farther to the whatever side you're fighting the lean from it helps um i still kind of struggle with it but it, it's really like when my rpms are like way higher is when i struggle with it the most when i'm like doing a slower wheelie it i fight sideways lean but that's mostly just because of the speed and then when the rpms are higher that's when i fight like where it's actually like pulling and also a, a big help to that was dropping my psi down from like 32 to 20 uh maybe 20 25 mine's on 20 right now which is still i think it's kind of like a reasonable amount it it does flatten out more but i, I also can still lean pretty good with it so all right so two of the things i forgot to mention first of all always hover over your foot brake it doesn't matter if you know how to use it yet or not you're going to eventually need it or maybe it will save you one day even if you don't plan on going to the point where you're gonna dip back and scrape or whatever 
always hover over the foot brake because it is your only savior if you go too far. Second of all, power wheelies. Um, I didn't, I didn't ever mention them. I didn't even think about it to be honest, and it's mostly because I never did them. I did some on a dirt bike before I learned to clutch up, but I, I pretty much, I only did a couple of them, and I went straight to clutch ups. And I've never done a power wheelie um, to learn how to wheelie on a street bike. It was only a dirt bike, so I just, I didn't even think about it. Um, as far as what I mentioned in the video, learn to clutch up. That's going to be the first stage um, towards consistently doing wheelies. When you consistently clutch up, you're going to want to start staying on the throttle. I know it's probably going to be scary, but you're going to you're going to have to stay on the throttle if you want to be able to chase them out, or you want to be able to start getting higher and higher, um, and eventually reach balance point or whatever your goal may be. And after you've gotten to a kind of a comfortable spot with your wheelies, you're consistently doing wheelies, but you want to get better. You're going to have to force your your improvement. The only way to improve is to go out of your comfort zone. And the safest way that I know how to do that, that kind of guarantees that you don't crash, is to consciously tell yourself, hey, I'm going to give it a little bit of throttle and I'm in a foot brake. Um, if your foot brake doesn't work, obviously don't do that. Um, but if your foot brake does work, then give a little bit of throttle and foot brake and you're going to start reaching a new height. You're going to have new experience with new height that, you know, as, as you continue to practice, it'll, you'll get more used to it. So you won't be scared of it anymore. And you'll also be building the foot brake muscle memory. Um, at some point I built the foot brake muscle memory and I just started doing it. And uh, it was probably by doing this. Um, I was also wheeling the XR a lot, which I was I was learning how to foot brake on that. So that's probably mostly where I got it from. But along with forcing improvement, this is how I did it on my street bike. I had to tell myself, hey, I'm gonna go a little bit higher. It's gonna be scary, but I'm a foot brake, so I know I won't loop. That's that's the only way I really know how to quickly improve. Um, and it's still the speed of which you improve is still up to everybody individually in their comfort zones um but for how i did it i mean this is how i this is how i learned to wheelie and this is how i progressed to eventually scraping i, I scraped today um the day that i'm actually making it and giving you this voiceover right now i scraped for the first time so um yeah I mean it worked for me so I don't know doesn't mean it worked for everybody I guess but this is just how I did it and it was requested that I get, give a tutorial on it so yeah that's a that's gonna wrap it up those are my three key points learn to clutch up stay on the throttle force improvement if you enjoyed the video uh, I guess like and subscribe I've never really asked anybody to do that if you absolutely hated the video if I'm just the worst tutorial maker ever drop a fat old dislike on it um thank you guys for almost 1000 subscribers i'll give a like a more formal thank you for that i guess at 1000 i guess i'll start thinking of uh, if i can do anything special for it i haven't really thought of anything so if you guys have any ideas for that let me know in the comments if you think i missed anything um or could have done something better or want or have any questions or whatever I read the comments so I'll, pro I'll just answer your question if if it calls for another video i guess i can do another video um but yeah thank you guys for watching i'll see you in the next one